Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at another horrific workplace injury story from anti-work. So let's just get into it. I lost my leg in an accident at work and today I was expecting my settlement. I lost my leg in an accident at work and today I was expecting my settlement. Only to be told the accident is still under investigation over a year later. I only use this Reddit account to share the ups and downs in my life, and I post a lot, but delete a lot, so I won't be putting in personal identifying information on purpose. And I'll be vague, but over a year ago, I was involved in an accident at a warehouse in Idaho. My supervisor was operating heavy machinery and wasn't paying attention, later discovered to be high, and ran into my station, to, despite my bright ass safety vest and hat. My leg was crushed beyond rehabilitation, it was basically mush. My supervisor left the property immediately without calling for help and later refused a mandatory drug test. I laid in agony for 30 minutes alone, waiting for my coworker to come back from break. This was in the middle of the pandemic. 16 workers who had tested positive, so were understaffed. Supervisor was high, lied about who was operating the machine, and tried pinning it on my coworker, except he was on break and his time card saved him. I don't know the specifics of what happened with my supervisor, but he was immediately transferred to another warehouse in a different state, but with the same company. When I was in the hospital, the company extended an offer to my wife when I was incapacitated. I'd get a third of my income, be able to keep my job, and would get a settlement after the investigation cleared. Looking back now, I don't know how legal this was, but I did agree to it when my wife explained it. I had a house with no mortgage, I had a small savings built up, and I didn't think an investigation would take so long. The accident happened on the clock, I was wearing the OSHA required gear, and I had no drugs or alcohol in my system. I also had an eyewitness statement from my employer about how he found me. I was given a promotion to a desk job at my original pay, which I'm supposed to start next month, except I can't return to work until the investigation is complete. Today was supposed to be the day. I've lost significant weight and my prosthetic leg no longer fits and the money to modify it is taking money out of my son's mouth, which I'm not going to do. This accident caused my wife to realize she's not attracted to me with one leg, and has since moved on and surrendered her rights to our son. I now have him permanently full-time, which is great, except we don't have any running water. I have a huge deposit to pay the water company before I can get service because my ex wrote bad checks years ago. We've been showering at truck stops and relying 100% on food pantries. But that isn't going to work anymore because of gas prices, limited amount of times I can go to the pantry, and my son is terrified of the truck stop. I kept saying we only had to get through till March 14th when I got the money. I was denied food stamps and am waiting on child support. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I'm losing hope. I make too much for social services. I can't crowdfund donations because of my disability case. I've thought about finding a new job, but any job where I would make enough to sustain us is going to require a physical test that I won't pass. What should I do? Should I try to find a pro bono lawyer? I don't understand why it keeps getting extended. Not to make this a sob story, and I say this with pure raw grief, I've started thinking about giving up my son to foster care. I would never use my disability for my gain, but I think it would be a good enough reason that makes me sick to my stomach and makes me feel like a monster when it's the company I work for who's causing this. I know this accident wasn't my fault. I don't want to be the poor schmuck who lost his leg, whose life is over. TLDR, accident at work results in leg amputation and the company is dragging their feet investigating, which is a luxury I cannot afford. I wanted to add that while I was in the hospital, I was being loyal to my company and truly believed this would be resolved quickly. My boss told me the accident was reported to OSHA and the proper channels. I'm now wondering if it was really reported, but not sure how I would find that out. Wow. Unbelievable. So we have a few uh, commenters here who are actually going to uh, answer his question about OSHA. Peasant4 says... You can check if an OSHA file was started at OSHA.gov. Go to the menu, pick Help and Resources, then pick Establishment Search, and try to find your employer. As an amputation, they would have been required to call OSHA. If they did not, it's a violation for reporting requirements. They have six months from the time of incident, 
assuming it was reported immediately, to investigate. So they would have had to visit already if they were going to. If they didn't do that, OSHA may be very interested in finding out. If they did, maybe you can at least request the report. If this is a workers' comp claim, which it sure as hell better be, that claim info will make great proof. This isn't a complaint. They ruined a significant portion of your life. Idaho does not have a state OSHA program, so it's directly to the federal level, which has an office in Boise. They would have been the ones to do the inspection, so it could be as simple as giving them a call. I don't work for OSHA or the government, also not a lawyer, but every time I've dealt with them they've been very reasonable, even when we were being investigated by them. Even if they did all they were required to, it should have created a file with some useful information. Now, Adventurous Dream 442 says, Obviously you've gotten tons of responses. I didn't look through all of them, but saw many saying to get a lawyer. I just want to give you a little more context in hopes that it helps you find a good attorney for you without even more difficulty. I don't know your state law or specifics, so I have no idea how likely it is that you are nearing a deadline or can get the contract thrown out or anything. First, attorneys don't all do the same things, so you want to work with someone who focuses on this type of work. Seems from your post that that would be a personal injury PI attorney, preferably one that handles workers' comp cases as well. If you know which insurance company your workplace uses, see how much that attorney, uh, attorney has gone against them. Just bring it up while talking with them. It seems like the insurer is company X, is X insurance company for WC and Y law firm is sending his stuff. Have you been against them much? You won't necessarily find someone who has, but with some companies you will. Don't go off billboards and ads alone, or at all. Talk to people you know, post online, asking generally who people in your state have used. Read what people say. Some PI attorneys are great at slip and fall cases, but don't handle bigger ones. So consider how similar cases, to a non-attorney, seem when considering recommendations. You can also see if there are any online forums or such that attorneys in your areas use. Most attorneys won't touch public stuff, but you might luck out. Find out who defense attorneys on uh, PI personal injury cases uh, hate to go against. That's usually the ones who are toughest. Tough sometimes just means they're jerks. You might be able to just look online at court records to see who's in the local court representing people a lot. You might find attorney referral services online. I'm not talking about the ones that charge you, but ones uh, through bar associations or local courts. I would prefer ones that attorneys don't pay for, but you can always find them. And sometimes it's a fee of like 50 bucks that goes towards charitable work. In terms of payment, most PI and workers' comp plaintiff attorneys take cases where you don't pay up front, but they get a cut of whatever you win. Yeah, that's called uh, working on contingency. With some you pay expenses like court fees, others you don't. I think it's just whatever local practice is. So if you want 100k, the attorney's 40% would leave you with 60k. Less expenses. It's a system designed to allow people in your shoes to go to court and encourage attorneys to take on the cases. When you see the amount going to the attorneys, it can feel rough, but think of it as the rest of the money you wouldn't have without the attorney. Plus, they often end up working for nothing or way below what the hourly rate would have been. I'd start contacting people ASAP. You might be reaching the statute of limitations, depending on things. You'll want to have an explanation ready to say, but realize that you'll likely have to schedule online or talk to someone in the office to schedule first, and they'll typically, and they typically didn't need or want the whole story. After all, some things you only want to tell the attorney so it's confidential and privileged. Some have an initial intake with someone who isn't an attorney. PI attorneys often need to do a lot more checking uh, on potential clients to make sure they think it's a good case, since if it isn't, they'd end up with nothing. I'd have a written explanation that's uh, short for the initial contact and something longer fit the subsequent one, just because that keeps you on track and less nervous. You might even tell the attorney or person you speak with at the scheduled time that you have written a detail of events in chronological order. The document they had your ex-wife sign, all other communications with the employer regarding this or related things, all communications with anyone representing your employer, medical bills, medical reports, and anything else you can think of. I'd include a timeline of communications with promises and delays. Try to focus on the factual for everything you're writing out on that list. So, supervisor ran out and left me unable to move. Coworker couldn't hear my screaming until returned from break approximately 30 minutes later. Called 911. Not that idiot supervisor got scared and ran away and I was trapped for what felt like forever thinking on XYZ until my coworker got back, freaked out, and then called for help. 
Then have a separate document where you do more, uh, put more emotional language and explain all the ways it's affected your life and your son. The emotional pain, end of marriage, depression, weight loss, can't afford to live normally, etc. Having all that will help the attorney evaluate it and get a better sense of what to do to advise you. I'm not saying to spend weeks on this, but it's all easier to do the sooner you do it and could help move, move you along with the attorneys. Don't email or submit stuff like that online through forms. Use secure sharing or mail slash bring it in person. Good luck. And Sophie Wynn says again, yeah, this is a lawyer situation. Many lawyers will not do this pro bono, but rather do a contingency fee, yep, where they take a percentage of the settlement amount. You don't pay now, but later when you pay, you pay when you actually have money. Talk to a lawyer ASAP, a good one. There's a statute of limitations where after a certain period of time, you aren't allowed to bring a case. Never assume a company that wronged you would ever do the right thing. For F's sake, they're going to delay this investigation until you're no longer able to bring a case against them. They'll try to give you as little as possible, if not nothing. Talk to a lawyer immediately. This is already going to be a timely situation. Your lawyer is going to appreciate as much time as they can get. Just reading this is stressing me out. It's already been a year. And Chris Coe says, OP, please post this to r slash legal advice. And then OP responds, okay, guys, I get it. I'm getting a lawyer, so I'm done here. Stop harassing me in my inbox and threatening me. I reported the accident to my boss. It wasn't my job to report it to anyone but him per policy. I was too busy fighting for my life and relearning to walk to second guess whether things were getting done. I was under the impression it was reported. This is my fault, and I'm paying dearly for it. And so uh, OP posted an update a day later. I wanted to throw up an update even though my post isn't even 24 hours old yet. I don't know if either post will be locked or deleted by me or not, but the harassment I'm getting is BS. If you think I'm a scammer because I delete posts or you think my post isn't real, okay. I'm not giving out personal info I'm not, and I'm not sending you a pic of my leg for your fetish. I'm not asking for anything. Read that again. I'm not asking for anything. Now for the update. A lawyer has agreed to take my case, and I found out OSHA was not notified, so everyone telling me to sue and get millions, that might actually effing happen. To everyone asking, why didn't you get a lawyer immediately? My answer is, why would I? Not my job and above my pay grade. Come on, OP. I'll elaborate. I worked with the company for years. There's a strict chain of command policy that workers report anything to the boss, and the boss takes it from there. That is his job, not mine. I was told I would keep my job, receive a third of my income as disability, be able to keep my health care insurance, and was told I'd have a job waiting for me that I could successfully do with my injury once I recovered. I've paid zero towards medical and am waiting on my new fitted leg, but the padding isn't recovered. It was enough for me to it was enough for, for me at the time, so I agreed. I never once thought they would screw me over or drag this out. I thought they would do their jobs. I was told on or before March 14th was the longest the investigation would take. I thought it would be way quicker than that and was told there was a possibility it could be sooner. Looking back now, I was an idiot for not checking with OSHA, but I didn't think I had to. All work accidents need to be investigated. I had the date March 14th engraved into my brain, so until that date passed, I didn't think anything of it. I got busy relearning to walk and getting divorced. Please stop getting so worked up and remember I'm living this. You aren't. Yes, I'm pissed and an effing ignorant fool. I don't need to keep being reminded. Things are in the right direction now. I have a lawyer. And yes, I'll keep blocking every single harassing user in my inbox. Posted an edit. To anyone who's saying, fake, he didn't contact a lawyer for a year, but in less than a day after posting to Reddit, everything is fixed. Nothing is fixed. I contacted a lawyer who quickly agreed to represent me. There's still so much to be done. Before I posted to Reddit, I didn't think I needed a lawyer. I was waiting it out until the phrases, your employer is dragging this out on purpose, check OSHA, here's a link, etc. lit the fire under me, and I finally realized what was happening. I have Reddit to thank for that. Wow. So what do you guys think about this? Can you imagine working for a company all that time only to be hung out to dry like this? It does seem like the consensus is that uh, OP should have immediately sought legal advice instead of counting on the company to do the right thing which I tend to agree with. So, yeah, that's that's about it. We'll see if he has an update for us later. 
so yeah, tell us about your craziest uh, workplace injury story down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more stories. Until next time.